Alright, so this is the Liberato engine. As you can see over here, there's the ignition spark. The injection fuel system would be right over here. The actual combustion chamber is hidden and it's behind here. And uh, there are the three main components, which are the leading rotor, the following rotor, and the connection rod, which is over here. And the fourth component is part of the exhaust system, which is this rotating tube over here. Now, at this point, all the combustion gas and air is compressed inside the combustion chamber and uh, the ignition spark plug ignites and causes the combustion. As you can just see, the, um, the surface area of the combustion chamber uh, quickly enlarges. Therefore, as it combusts, there is a fairly constant torque over 150 degrees because as the pressures go down, the surface area increases it causes a very uniform torque over 150 degrees of rotation. Once it reaches this point, the combustion gases exit through the rotating rod. As you can just see, the light indicates the channel, the light channel, where the combustion gases exit. And further on, I'll discuss how the compressed gases in this part of the chamber aid in pushing out the uh, combusted gases because three atmospheres of pressure are located in this area and only during one point of the combustion cycle does the right side of the combustion chamber go into direct interface with the left side of the combustion chamber through the combustion pocket which is located behind here which I will show, indicate right now. At that point, as you can see, the light actually passes from one combustion chamber to the other, and the gases, which are compressed at three atmospheres, pass on to push the exhaust gases out of here. Now, one big advantage is that the exit ports are very large vis-a-vis -vis piston engines. Therefore, there is very little friction caused by the exit gases as they exit out of the combustion chamber. Now I'll go on to speak about how the gas is intaked, fresh air is intaked into the Liberato engine. And basically this occurs through the center of the engine. The top plate interfaces with this entire surface and only air can enter through this orifice here. This orifice over here is, is, um, is placed in direct contact with this hole over here. And basically what occurs is there is a mechanical chamber which mechanically enlarges. And as this occurs, air is forced into the engine mechanically as the chamber expands. As can be seen, the chamber is ever expanding. Until it reaches a maximum internal volume, which is all this area over here. At that point, the mechanical seal closes and what you have is now, as the engine progresses, a compression of this entire volume of gas, as can be seen. All the gas gets compressed and moves into this area. That is where the three atmospheres of compressed air occur, and that is what aids in pushing out the exhaust gases through the combustion chamber located behind here which only occurs during this specific angular orientation of the engine. Now, what happens is, as the combustion gases exit the uh, chamber, the fresh gas comes and aligns itself with the rotating rotor, which is a mechanical seal, and unlike 
combustion chambers and piston technology, there's very little pressure on the outlet rotor because as the combustion cycle occurs, there are very large seals which actually do hold the compressed, the expanding gases which are um, across this entire area. And a uh, big advantage over the rotary engine is that the two rotors do not depend whatsoever on the actual housing because the two rotors are directly fixed via bearings. Uh, the following rotor having this as the center and the leading rotor having this as the center, both fixed by bearings, therefore no lateral um, uh, holding force is required, reducing loss of friction. And uh, the other huge advantage of this engine is that as the combustion occurs, the force placed directly on this, uh, the leading rotor places its force on the output shaft, which is over here. So as you can see, as the combustion occurs, the force is placed directly on the output shaft. Another big advantage of this engine is that there is very uniform dilatation of the material due to a number of factors, one of which is that as the air circulates from this chamber to the other one, there is a constant flow of air, recirculation of air, and uh, as this surface over here, which has just been exposed to the combustion, as it rotates a few more degrees, it is directly placed on the other side, therefore transferring lots of the heat which it has been exposed to. And uh, another very big advantage of this engine is the compression ratio, which can be regulated accordingly to the type of gas which is used uh, due to the difference in, in the circle diameters between the right side and the left side. And um, there is uh, a very big expansion of the gases in uh, the combustion uh, side of the engine, and this allows for a very complete combustion of the gases, and uh, therefore uh, also heavily reduces uh, emissions due to incomplete burning of the gases. Now I should just let it run. This indicates where the air is able to pass through, which is in the combustion chamber back here. That is it.